Five years ago, Moses Malone and the Houston Rockets shot the Los Angeles Lakers in the opening round of the playoffs. They now meet again, and Akeem Olajuwon is the new Moses in Houston. One half of a towering front court tandem. Ralph Sampson is the other half. Two seven-footers out to bring an end to four years of Laker domination in the West. Lakers' superiority includes the entire NBA. They're the defending world champions who must fight off yet another challenge. This is a team that has been through the wars and has survived. Now, another test. And the focus again will be on a great veteran legend and how he contends with a pair of young giants. are the memories of the Rockets' success in Denver and the Lakers' victory in Dallas. Today, they start a whole new ball game at the Forum. And we are indeed at the Forum in Inglewood, California for Game 1 of the Western Conference Final between the Houston Rockets and the Los Angeles Lakers. The teams got there by virtue of six game victories. The Lakers over Dallas, the Rockets over Denver, and they were a grueling series indeed. And now we have a series that has been much anticipated. People have been talking about this possibility since midseason. Hello again, everyone. I'm Dick Stockton, and welcome to the NBA on CBS. It's going to be quite a matchup today because we have the Lakers' overall experience. We have their quickness and their tremendous balance against the youthful Rockets with their imposing twin towers and their great speed. And if the Houston Rockets want to be considered amongst the NBA's elite, they're going to have to prove it against the Lakers in this series. My partner, as usual, is Tommy Heinz. And Tommy, as we start the series, what are the assets first of the Rockets and the Lakers? Well, I think the Rockets, with their twin towers, Akeem Olajuwon and Ralph Sampson, have outstanding speed at those spots. Plus, a very strong inside game. Either one of them can score, and they can uh, really do a job on you uh, defensively. I think they uh, also get the ball up and down the court, the Rockets, very effectively. But uh, the uh, Lakers really have the smartest of all the big guys, I think, that have ever played the game. His ability to read defenses, Akeem uh, Abdul-Jabbar, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, will get that job done. And Magic Johnson running a fast break as the middleman gets it like nobody else. What will it come down to, do you think, in this series? I think timely substitutions by Pac Riley will play a big part. And I think who runs their fast break better, gets more of them, and converts them into productive points. All right, Tommy, you know, the Lakers have opened up at home and have won big. That's been their history in the first game of playoffs. We'll see what happens. It's the Rockets and the Lakers. It's the NBA on CBS. The NBA on CBS. Today's game from the Forum is sponsored by Miller Lite. For great taste, there's only one light beer. IBM. And by GMAC, the financial services people from General Motors. It started out as a party, but turned into a case of the missing case. The ruby in there. Incredible feat. Thank you. Hey, we're turning out the lights. It's okay, doll. No, it's not. There's a case of Miller Lite missing. Oh. Who took it? It had to be somebody in this room. Rodney! Hey, guys, take it easy. We're here. Why'd you do it, Rodney? Because light tastes great? Yeah! Because well, light's less filthy. Yeah! I tell you, I didn't do it. Well, I'm not even Rodney. You! I thought it was a costume party! Great mask, huh? <laughs> it's no mystery that there's only one light beer, Miller Lite. But if he didn't do it, who did? I own a PC and a VCR, a condo on the beach, and my own company. But I don't own a car. I lease with GMAC. For me, leasing was smarter than buying. It's just good money management. And since I worked out the terms with my GM dealer, I can pay less each month. It was easy. Now I've got the new car I want, and leasing frees up my money for other things. GMAC leasing, only at your GM dealer. For you, it just might be smarter than buying. Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. No matter what you drive, drive, or where you drive, or 
what conditions you drive under. With mobile synthetic oil technology, there's no finer engine protection anywhere. Now save up to $3 on mobile motor oils and get a chance to win a Corvette or one of a thousand other prizes. We have a late arriving crowd. They're still filing in here at the Forum. And while they do and while we get set, here are the starting lineups. For the Rockets, Ralph Sampson and Rodney McRae are the forwards. Akeem Olajuwon, the center, and in the backcourt, the veteran Robert Reed and Lewis Lloyd. Bill Fitch, he has been to the championship and has won with the Boston Celtics. The Lakers go with their familiar lineup of Kurt Rambis and James Worthy. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar at center, and in the backcourt, Irvin Johnson and Byron Scott. Pat Riley trying to get to the championship round for the fifth consecutive year. The officials working this game one are Hugh Evans and Hugh Hollins. Ed Middleton is the alternate. The Lakers are in the gold uniforms and Houston in the red. And we're looking at one of the two big guys. There's the other one. And the focus will be on the third as well. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Dick, this may be the fastest paced series in the history of the playoffs. I mean, they're going to run at each other. And that's what everyone likes, right? I do. <laughs> People love the end-to-end -end style, and we'll see if it's sustained. And it's going to be Houston's possession out of bounds on a jump violation, and Rodney, Rodney McRae will inbound. So Houston coming off the best year in their 19-year history. Underway here. Tommy, we're going to look at matchups, too, as we get underway. And as we start out, Byron Scott will be on the taller Robert Reed. And Magic Johnson's going to be playing the Houston forward, Rodney McRae. That's an unusual matchup. Ralph Sampson goes outside, as he likes to do. But there's Akeem Olajuwon inside to put Houston in front. And that is a stamp of what the Rockets want to do. You must put a body on Akeem. James Worthy out to Magic Johnson. Two-man game, Worthy ties it up. Tell me, what did Pat Riley have in the locker room before the game? Lockout, Akeem Olajuwon, always underlined four times. That should emphasize it. <laughs> Here's Lloyd, guarded by James Worthy and Lewis Lloyd Travel. Experience of the Lakers against the inexperience of Houston. And here you see Akeem coming uncontested for that rebound and he is so strong he's going to power it through if you don't get him before he gets within five feet of the basket Lloyd is on Magic Johnson they go into Kareem gets it in good position on Samson but Samson is 7-4 and Kareem misses his first shot McCray alley oops it to Ralph doesn't work but there's Elijah Wong again with a slam there's the long lead pass and McCray was ready for it I think Houston's prepared for that play. Lloyd. Sampson. There's Magic. Lloyd trying to impede his progress, but Magic gets to the hoop and draws the foul. Well, that's where they have the advantage, Dick. Magic Johnson is a supreme middleman, and his ability to penetrate, very important. But Sampson, way up the court, ahead of any of... Uh, Ahead of Rambus and Kareem. And as Elijah Wan, you've got to get up there fast and block them out. Foul is on Elijah Wan, who, by the way, in the Denver series, fouled out of three games and was tossed out of the fourth when he kind of nudged Jack Madden, the official, which you can't do. And yet, without several players, the Rockets managed to eliminate Denver on the road in double overtime to get to this first game. Scott has improved defensively. Reed. And Magic Johnson out of the pack again. Finds Scott. Two on one. Magic's rebounding will be a factor if he's going to play down. Rodney McRae. Rambis. Trying to knock the ball away and deny. Elijah Wan commits the foul going to be a tough day for Kurt Rambis defending against the Keen. Well, he has to rely on some help. He tries to circle around, confuse the passer, almost picks it off, but picks up the foul instead. You talked about Pat Riley going to his bench to go with his bigger men like Goodmanson and Kupchak. Lewis Lloyd on the baseline. Lloyd has only been shooting 40% against the Lakers this year, far below what he shot in the regular season. Facing the hoop is worth it. 
he can get that shot, James Worthy, uncontested, he's going to be able to get it off because McCray is not big enough to really trouble him. And Worthy has struggled against the Houston Rockets this year, averaging some four points less than his playoff average in regular season, Mark. Houston has nullified Worthy this season. Yeah. Sampson, out of bounds, last touch by the Lakers. To bring you up to date, on the regular season, the Lakers won four out of the five meetings. But Houston made it close the last time after beating the Lakers in Houston in their next to last meeting. Elijah won. Double teams. The Lakers are hoping that the double team on Akeem will confuse him. Biggest margin between these two teams was a 22-point Laker blowout prior to the All-Star game. Kareem is fouled going inside. You know, what, you know what's interesting, Dick? They always have, when you get near the basket, a defender on the guy with the ball and somebody hovering behind, ready to block the shot once it's released. Very tough to get inside the Houston defense. Ralph Sampson committing the foul, so Elijah Wan and Sampson each have a personal foul. And Kareem has been a tremendous free throw shooter, 84% in the playoffs. I mean, he is going to get tested in a different fashion, Dick. How fast he can get up for how long is going to be important. He's met every test so far. This is a new one. He's 39 years old, and when you talk about the George Blanders and the Jack Nicholas's and the Pete Rose, considering the sport he plays, this may be the most amazing story of them all. Just under nine minutes remaining in the opening period. Lakers by two. Seven on the clock, stolen by Worthy. Can't save it. Houston ball. Worthy is an exceptional de denied defender. I think it goes back to his college days with Dean Smith, but he can really get out there and deny the pass. There's a steal, and Worthy made it happen again. And they're going to call a foul. Rodney McRae, but it was James Worthy who nearly got a steal and then made one count. By playing him at a guard, which is what is happening right now on defense, Worthy's going to gamble a little bit, just steps right out and picks it off. But here comes Scott, who is a strong finisher on fast breaks and also an exceptional jump shooter. He's been playing well after a midseason shooting slump that took him out of the starting lineup. The Rockets, at 36-5, and five, had the second-best home record in the league, but the Lakers were not much worse at 35-6 and six here at the Forum, so they're tough here. Four-point Laker lead. A little more work on defense for Magic Johnson in this series if he's going to take McCray because McCray, the prime ball handler. Reed going in. Good move by Robert Reed. What has it meant for him to come to the backcourt when John Lucas was waived? Stability. There's the Laker fast break, which we'll see. Lloyd. Lewis Lloyd hitting again. 14 to 12 LA. Rampus on top, being guarded by Elijah Wan. Sampson on Kareem, and an illegal defense call against the Rockets. Next time will be a technical. This is a warning. We're going to take a look at Kareem trying to run the court and get up there as quickly as he can. He's hustling, but the youth of uh, the Rockets big guy is really tough, but he makes it happen. Magic Johnson, who's averaged 15 assists in the last three games of the playoffs, already has four. In this crashes the board and he stepped on the line what an effect Rambus was in the last game against Dallas I'll tell you he really did the defensive job played hard but he's gonna have to hit the offensive boards in this series Scott is all over Reed magic ready to double Samson good feed from feet from point to Elijah Wan and that Houston Rocket passing game inside brings them or ties them at 14 apiece with LA and Houston can take a lead Lloyd can't hold on to it a turnover magic foul going inside magic's penetration very important to set up a lot of good things for Rambis and Kareem. 
But here's Sampson changing James Worthy's shot. He sees him. He knows he has to leap away from him because Sampson's got that great arm reach and leaping ability. Mitchell Wiggins, who came on strong at the finish after a disappointing year, has come into the ball game early. And uh, Ralph Sampson picks up his second personal foul. So if the Rockets get into foul trouble, as you look at Wiggins, Jim Peterson will make an entrance, and he could be a key factor in the game. We'll talk more about him when he comes in. Magic hits the free throws, and the Lakers lead by two. Houston has not been to the free throw line yet. The Lakers are eight for eight with 7.05 to go in the first period. Sampson now out to Reed. Eight on the shot clock. High pass for Elijah Wan, but there's McCray. Worthy picks up the loose ball. Lakers look like they're picking up where they left off Thursday night in Dallas. But Magic throws it away into the hands of Wiggins. Three on two for Houston. And Mitchell Wiggins again ties the game. It's going to be racehorse basketball here. These teams met in 1981 in a mini series. Houston shocked the Lakers two games to one. And in fact, they won both games at the Forum. Batted away by Sampson, but there's Randall. Kareem. And the Lakers did a tattoo number on the offensive boards there. I tell you, when you grab a rebound on the offensive glass, you have to worry about where Ralph Sampson is and Akeem Olajuwon. And in just that instant, while you're worrying, half the time you'll miss the shot. They've got Wiggins and Elijah Wan inside. Now Wiggins comes out of the pack. Former Chicago Bull. And it'll be a new 24-second clock on a kick ball. And we're going to have a timeout called by the Lakers. Philadelphia 76ers clawed back and trounced the Milwaukee Bucks 126 to 108 to even that Eastern semifinal at three apiece. A triple double for Maurice Cheeks, the great point guard who played 44 minutes. And what about Bobby Jones? He's going to retire, he says, after this playoff, but maybe he'll reconsider with his fine play. The Milwaukee Bucks have never won a seventh game. They'll get their chance on their home court against the 76ers tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern on CBS. And, Tommy, that's going to be quite a battle royal in Milwaukee. Well, I think Sidney Moncrief will be playing. How effectively he can play remains to be seen. But it's certainly going to be a challenge for Terry Cummins, who wants to make it known that he's a great player. What an inspiration Moncrief is going to be to his team, even though he's not nearly 100%. And Philadelphia needs to win on the road. Tremendous battle tomorrow. Elijah Wan hits an arc shot, and he is 5 for 5 from the field with 10 points in the ballgame. He's averaged 26 in the playoffs. 5.35 to go first period. And we have a Houston foul away from the ball. The game has been tied seven times. Robert Reed is hit with his first personal foul. They're in the penalty, and Rambis will shoot. As Rambis trying to set a pick, and Reed just fighting and holding... And you're not allowed to do that, of course, Richard. That's what they tell me. Rambus makes good. John Lucas was the point guard who led this club earlier in the year. And he had the drug problem that necessitated Houston, in their view, to waive him on March the 14th. The Rockets survived that trauma. Alan Level became the point guard. And then he went down with a broken hand. And Robert Reed became the point guard. And the Rockets have still flourished. And he has really added tremendous defense to them. Here he is offensively. Scott picks him up. Reed. Tipped up. No good. Elijah Wan. And the Lakers wind up with it. Leading by two. And the Lakers are getting down court successfully against Houston, if not to get the basket to draw the foul. We're going to see Kurt Rambis really playing some defense. Has to show himself. Reed's penetration but Rambis doesn't truly block out Elijah Wan. And Elijah Wan, if you allow him to leap, he's going to outleap anybody. But Rambis picks it off the floor. Good hustle there. Mitchell Wiggins committed the foul. Magic Johnson has 
slipped in his free throw shooting from the regular season to the playoffs, where he's 75%. Connects on one out of two, and with 5-11 to go in the first period, L.A. by three. Rodney McCray and Robert Reed bring the ball up for Houston. McCray the point forward. He's the point guard at a forward position. Double team on Sampson, who has not scored, and now an illegal defense called against the Lakers, so each team has been hit with one of those charges. The Lakers are going to play a canny game with both Akeem Olajuwon and Ralph Sampson. Every once in a while, they're going to throw a double at them. Get them to start thinking they'll have to find the open man. The Lakers have committed only one foul so far in this game, and we have 4.45 remaining in the opening period. Sampson, good pass to Wiggins. Great pass in the batter of back from Ralph Sampson. Well, James Worthy got caught rotating when he shouldn't have been. Sampson, one of the great passers of forwards and centers around the league. Worthy guarded by McCray. Sampson crashes the boards, but Kareem had the position. 21 to 20 in favor of the Lakers. Kareem against Sampson. And Elijah Wan with another rebound, his third. McCray looking for Hakeem. Batted away by Scott. Recovered by McCray. Who hits the jumper. I'll tell you, this Houston Rocket Club is a poised unit, Tom. That's what these playoffs have done for them. Uh, before, and during the regular season, they were a little helter-skelter. I think Reed has given them that stability. And they have their first lead of the game since 4-2. And they're going to count the basket by Byron Scott and a foul on Houston. It'll be Mitchell Wiggins with the personal foul. His second foul. They're going to see a great baseline pick on Robert Reed. Kareem says, you're not going any place, Robert Reed. And that allows Scott to get the ball and then swing into the lane to end up making the hoop and getting fouled. Pat Riley is going to go to his bench. Maurice Lucas will be coming into the ball game, the 34-year-old power forward, as Scott tries to complete the three-point play. Maurice Lucas coming in right now has got to do a great job uh, as Rambus was doing on that offensive glass and Lucas really does probably a better job defending against Elijah Wan than Rambus does. Three and a half minutes remaining in the opening period. Sampson setting a screen on Magic Johnson. Robert Reed is short, gets his own rebound. a foul against Reed. That's his second. And here comes Maurice Lucas into the ball game. So will he take over the role of Rambus, who started the game at power forward? Absolutely. And this is where the bench of L.A. may really show the experience on the playoff competition, particularly Maurice Lucas and Michael Cooper. Cooper also into the ball game, shooting 57%, by the way, against the Rockets. 24 to 22, the Lakers lead. 3.05 to go, and it's still Laker ball. Now, Cooper was the guy who broke the back of the Mavericks with four clutch three-point field goals Thursday night at Reunion Arena. He's in there, I think, to really pressure the ball. An excellent defender to get up on the man who's going to bring the ball up the court. Scott winds up with it. Three minutes remaining opening period. Four points has been the biggest lead for the Lakers. Worthy. The double team and Akeem and Sampson never got there quick enough to affect Worthy's shot. All five Lakers have scored. And an L.A. foul has been called against Michael Cooper. That's only the second foul on the Lakers, and it comes with 2.36 remaining in the opening period. Who took the case of Miller Lite? I got another clue for you. I know for certain the culprit drinks light because it tastes great. But I know it wasn't me. It's no mystery that there's only one light beer, Miller Lite. Not many have mastered the art of painting with a roller. Luckily, there's the Wagner Power Roller. 
It pumps paint right from can to wall. Wagner does a better job. You missed a spot. Nissan announces 6.7 annual percentage rate factory-sponsored financing on any new Nissan truck. 6.7 could save you as much as $693 in interest payments on this tough new Nissan with the most power of any leading compact truck. And on this 4x4 hard body with the biggest engine in any compact truck, 6.7 could save you as much as $1,643. 6.7 now from Nissan for a limited time. Are your homeowner's insurance bill swallowing a little too much of your budget? There is something you can do about it. Leave it to the good hands, people. Come into Allstate and compare. I'll be in menswear. We'll do everything we can to save you some money. There you are, sir. Nice shirt. Well, thanks. Looks like I get to keep it. Yours in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. He had it all, but there was a woman inside him raging to get out. Vanessa Redgrave stars in the most startling role of her career as Renee Richards in Second Serve, Tuesday. This man, Rodney McRae, very important to getting the ball to Elijah in the post. James Worthy will back off because they feel that Rodney McRae cannot hit the outside shot to try and cut off the passing angle. And you can see a guy like Worthy can make it make it a tough pass. Elijah Wan and double team, but you're going to see McRae come back in, and this is the type of shot he must hit in order to make it easier to pass in to Elijah Wan. Rodney McRae, who was the third pick in the 1983 draft after Ralph Sampson and Steve Stepanovich, and actually was a freshman center on Louisville's NCAA championship team in 1980. So Purvis Ellison did the same thing for Louisville this year in the final four. Rodney McRae's been there. Two and a half to play in the opening period. Nick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn. Mitchell Wiggin hits the shot, and it's a two-point game again. I tell you, he's got his shooting stroke down, and he could be a big factor in this series. You kind of tend to forget about Mitchell Wiggins, and by the end of the series, the Lakers are going to know him good. On the turnover, Robert Reed. Wiggins on the wing. Cooper picks him up in a hurry. They're similar players in style, Cooper and Wiggins. Both play good defense. Back up point guard. Under two minutes to go, first period. Here's Elijah Wan. Air ball, but there's Sampson on the other side, and he's on the scoring column for the first time today. Green has played a lot of minutes here, Dick, so far without a rest. We've had eight ties in the game, so Houston has played Los Angeles even here in the opening stand. Seven on the shot clock. Bounce pass, Cooper. You got to worry about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's ability to pass to an open cutter. He sees what the defense is doing all the time. Sampson. Short. Kareem played him perfectly. Worthy to an open Lucas. Maurice Lucas is shooting 53% against Houston. Only 46 in the regular season. So he's like going against this team. One minute remaining in the opening period. 30 to 26, the Lakers lead. In the corner, Wiggins hits another one. He can really help the Rockets if they get that kind of shooting off the bench. Four out of five for Wiggins. Scott comes back with a jumper from the corner. When they move the ball up quickly up the court, the Houston Rocket defense usually goes back into the paint. Scott's going to get a lot of wide open jumpers. And Wiggins is red hot. He has hit five out of six and has ten points. He and Elijah Wan lead the Rockets. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn, game one of the Western Finals between Houston and L.A. The series everyone was waiting for, and now it's upon us. And it's been a close game in the opening period. Here is one of the big men that Pat Riley said he would use, seven foot two inch Peter Goodmanson, and he'll come in for Kareem, who goes out of the ball game with six points. Ralph Sampson takes a breather, and Jim Peterson is in for the Rockets. Looks like both, both coaches say uh, when one of their superstars go out, they're going to put in Peterson and Goodmanson. Scott going for three. And here is Reed, two on one. Gets it to Elijah Wan, who's fouled. But I'll tell you 
tell you what, it was Mitchell Wiggins who made the sensational play when the ball appeared to be going out of bounds to Akeem. But there was the speed of Akeem in evidence that time. It goes up quickly, and Wiggins saves it, but Akeem right there. Goodmanson not even in sight in the picture to pick him up. Worthy had to pick him up. He, uh, it was Wiggins who really made that play happen. So the Rockets are on the free throw line for the first time today. And it comes with 14 seconds remaining in the opening period. Bill Fitch, who won division titles at Cleveland, Boston, and now with Houston, has done a fantastic job building this team up. Allen Level in for the Rockets is an exceptional push man. Sometimes he gets a little bit out of control, and he's a streaky outside shooter, but he did help them after John Lucas went down with the drug problem. Shooting only 22% in the playoffs, and Wiggins commits what Fitz would say is an unnecessary foul that will send Michael Cooper to the line with six seconds to go, and that's Wiggins' third foul. That's bad for Houston because Wiggins has been red hot from the field. You don't want to make a foul like that. Uh, it wasn't really a good gamble to try and make the steal or get all over the pass of the way he did. Very bad gamble. The Lakers are 13 out of 14 from the free throw line. Houston has gone on the line only twice. And the Lakers lead by two. Team is on the floor with six seconds to go. Level looks at the clock. Lost his footing. Gets it up. And it doesn't go. Almost tipped in. If that ball had gone through, it would have counted. And that is the end of the first period here at the Forum. Game one, best of seven. The Lakers lead by the slimmest of margins. Nissan shapes the hard bodies. Nissan King Cabs are built bigger. Nissan King Cabs are built smarter. Nissan King Cabs are built wider. This King Cab is Nissan's roomiest ever with more lockable storage space and new fold-down jump seats that hide away. Fuel injected hard bodies. You need a hard body. Hurry, get 6.7 factories. and Tom Heinsohn and James Brown is with us at the half where at the Forum in Inglewood where Jack Nicholson had to get up early today Tommy to see game <laughs> one because it started at 1230 West Coast time for this ball game and Houston LA this has become the darling series of the Western Conference and this is the beginning now you talked about fast break efficiency how do you interpret that well the Lakers got more of them they and they also scored eight times out of the nine times up the court Houston only had five fast break attempts so they are not really putting their speed to work as much as they could and they but they converted four of them Kareem starting the second period on the bench played a good deal of that first period and scored six so the Lakers have Cooper and Johnson in the backcourt and up front they have Lucas Worthy and Goodmanson the Rockets counter with Level and Lloyd in the backcourt Elijah Wan McCray and Jim Peterson up front Lucas guarded by Peterson. Lucas working in. And a three-second violation. Tommy, tell me about Jim Peterson, who really has improved with a weight program. How important is he to the Rockets? He is a must player in this series for the Rockets. He has got to rebound and he's got to score because he's going to be in there for a lot of minutes for either Akeem or Sampson. And he really is the only other big man the Rockets can call upon from the bench. Seven on the shot clock. Three-point attempt by Allen Level is good. So he has been struggling from the field. And that should do a world of confidence for him. And it's 35-34. The Rockets regain the lead. Our ninth lead change of this game. Magic looking for work. Lloyd inside the rebound. Peterson. What Tommy was talking about. Well, neither Lucas or Goodmanson got up quick enough for Peterson. And the Rockets have their biggest lead right now. With less than two minutes gone by in the second period. Magic in. Elijah Wan blocks. Cooper back on defense against Level. Feeds Lloyd. Feeds Elijah Wan. And that's the Houston running game, folks. I tell you, and did they play some kind of defense to set up that block? For Elijah Wan. 
beautiful defense. And a 20-second timeout by that man, Pat Riley. And you know, Tommy, the Lakers' plane was delayed three hours yesterday, and we should know we were on it. Let's take a look again at the block shot is the point I want to make. The good defense that time and making him spin made him commit very far out and allowed Lajuan to time the ball for the block. And here's the conversion. Beautiful Lajuan stop with the speed. Now, the Rockets worked out yesterday, but the Lakers did not, and they gathered today for a meeting. They closed everyone out of the forum, and then they walked through what they were going to do just an hour or so before the game. But I think they played them enough during the regular season that they have a game plan, and there would be no adjustments because it's the first game in the series. I think both coaches uh, would have liked to have had another day off, but uh, that's the way the playoffs go. Sometimes you play better under those circumstances. I think you're right. Well, the Rockets have run off seven in a row, Tommy, and now they have a chance for nine as Akeem moves in front of Goodmanson and gets that pass down. Five-point Houston lead, biggest lead for either team. Level hits again from outside, and the Rockets now lead 41-34. to 34. Two minutes elapsed in the second period. If they start hitting like that from the outside, the Lakers will have to move their defense out. That'll allow Akeem to get an even better position Magic pulling up over Lloyd hits, and that snapped nine in a row by the Rockets. Level in the game, Mitchell Wiggins, the third guard, three with three fouls, is on the bench. The level has contributed so far. Double team on Elijah Wan. Peterson battling inside, a team again. Basket good. How do you stop Elijah Wan and how strong he is at both ends of this floor? You know what's amazing about Elijah Wan is he's determined. He's determined to get a rebound. 16 points for Akeem Elijah Wan with 9.31 to go in the second. Legends of the NBA. The best come through. Sponsored by Schick. Game six of the 58 finals, and Bob Pettit turns in the performance of his career. Needing one win to dethrone the champion Celtics, Pettit is an unstoppable offensive machine. Down the stretch, he scores an unbelievable 19 of the Hawks' final 21 points. Pettit's record-setting 50-point night gives St. Louis its first and only NBA title. The beard is back. Shake it, shake it, shake it. It's back again. I need to get. You better get. Gotta get, gotta get shit. When the beard is back, Chick Disposable is always ready for close, clean shaves. Shave after shave. I need to get. You better get. Gotta get, get shit. Well, Tommy, let's take an overview of this series. How would you break down the various categories? Well, Dick, I think the speed advantage goes to Houston, particularly at the power forward and center spot. The rebounding is even, and I think the offensive rebounding will determine who wins this series. The inside game goes to the Twin Towers because they've got two of them. But I believe Kareem reads the defense better. The backcourt goes to the Lakers because Magic is the better passer on the fast break. The bench, of course, to the Lakers because they've got a lot more big people. The experience to uh, Los Angeles because they've got a lot of guys that have played in the playoffs, particularly the big guys. The coaching even, Bill Fitch has been there a lot of times, as has Pat Riley. But I really think the intangible that counts is the Lakers' ability to take the clutch shot under pressure. But right now, the Lakers are trailing by seven, and Tommy, with Kareem on the bench, Elijah Wan has been playing without having to worry about Kareem or any of the other big men uh, other than Goodmanson for the Lakers. Well, Goodman, they're going, I think the Lakers are going to try to turn Goodmanson into an offensive player here. He has not really gotten into the game yet, I think, as much as Pat Riley would have liked him to get him in. They tried to go to him in a low post. It didn't work. 17 points for Elijah Wan. Sampson has only two points in the game, and right now he's on the bench. Peterson has been playing in there. 9.23 to go. Eight-point lead. Cut to six. And now they say no basket. Magic Johnson interfered with the ball on top of the cylinder. So it is still 44-36 to 36 Houston. 
And he can open it up to 10 right now. Now Kareem gets off the bench. McCray. Lucas the rebound. Peterson was wise not to commit a foul. Magic Johnson. Fires it up, scores, and gets the foul. Magic. You'll see that. Watch him go right to the boards. That's what he has to do a little bit. When they don't cover him, get in there and give some extra help on the tip ends. They took the basket away, but that's the kind of effort. When it's there, he must get on the offensive glass. Lloyd commits the foul for Houston. Byron Scott and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar return for the Lakers. It's magic. This is the free throw. And we have a lane violation against Houston, and so Magic will get another opportunity. The Lakers have won the last 12 times that they have opened a playoff series at home. Their smallest margin of victory was 11 points. They averaged 22. So this is kind of unusual, the way Houston is playing awfully tough in this first game thus far. The Lakers still blow them out, of course. Under nine minutes to go in the half. Shot Kareem got a piece of Lloyd's attempt and it's still Houston's possession. Now well, that was the intelligence of Kareem. As soon as the man rolled over and got into the lane, uh, Keith, uh, uh, Kareem went right for the block. Good judgment there. Bill Fitz has gone a long time with Level and Peterson in the ball game now. That's to the advantage and uh, it's going to give uh, Elijah won a chance to get on the bench later on because Samson will be well rested. Samson has scored two points and has two fouls and getting a long rest. Scott out to meet level. And a foul. Kareem commits the foul on Elijah Wan. That's the first foul on number 33 for the Lakers. They put Kareem on Elijah Wan now. Every once in a while, they'll play him, and that's really because Sampson is not in the game. McCray finding level. Scott. Rockets by eight. 8.20 remaining, first half. Magic. the shot block that's what magic is going to do he's going to keep the Akeem and Samson guessing as to when they should go for the block Allen level penetrating inside gets nothing and here's magic Johnson five on three for the Lakers Houston coming right back Lloyd off his hands out of bounds gets a little sloppy now and coming back into the ball game is Ralph Sampson. But first this. You're going to see Magic draw the shot blocker and makes him leap and then dishes it off for an easy one. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar came through with another inside play. He has 10 points to lead the Lakers. It's 44 to 42 timeout. Houston. The Lakers have scored six in a row and trailed by two. What's that Fred's getting? A computer. What's he know about computers? They taught him everything he needs to know. He can't even drive a car. He's gonna run a computer? <laughs> yep, they sent him to a special class to learn how. Hope he did better in theirs than he did in ours. Yeah. <laughs> There's a special phone number he can call if he has any questions. He'll keep them busy. And if there's a problem, they'll come right here and fix it. Right here. Nobody ever comes here. <laughs> Who was it that gave Fred such a great deal? IBM. 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 You sure we're talking about the same Fred? Witness the beginning of a new legend. Jeep Wrangler. The possibilities are endless. The 
Byron Nelson Golf Classic continues tomorrow on CBS Sports. That follow us. The leaders are still on the course. Bobby Watkins and Andy Bean at eight under. George Burns and Craig Stadler only a stroke behind in the third round of the Byron Nelson Classic in Dallas. And final round action tomorrow on CBS. Tommy, we've heard of penalties for too many men on a court. What about too few? Well, this is a dumb play. Sampson is calling for Elijah to get off the court. Hakeem is lying right here. Nobody's going to guard Kareem up the other end of the court. Elijah Wan walking off. Nobody really attentive. They think they're going to be able to make the substitution. They forget about Kareem underneath the basket. The good pressure offense allows Kareem to score. Smart play by the Lakers. And a dumb play by the Houston Rockets as Sampson comes back in the ball game and Elijah Wan goes out with 17. Both teams shooting well. The Rockets at 57% for the game. The Lakers 56%. An eight-point lead's been cut to two. See what Sampson does now. He'll be guarded by Kareem. Ralph. They can't find the Magic. He's one for five. Magic finds Cooper. Back to Johnson. Look at Sampson hovering in the lane behind him, ready to block the shot. down a low post now for the Lakers. They're going to be another guy hanging behind you beside your own defender. That didn't take long for the Lakers to get back and tie this game with 6.45 to go in the first half. Rodney McCray misses and Lucas gets the rebound for L.A. Magic has been a busy man. Cooper, three. of the fast break. And no basket. A traveling call against Houston. L.A. on a roll. 13, now 15 straight. Making 13 in a row for the Lakers. As the intelligence of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar handling defenses. And Sampson ends the string of 13 straight points as Bill Fitz watches his Rockets squander an eight-point lead and now trail L.A. by three. You know, Sampson has to be more decisive, make his move quicker before the double team develops to be effective in that low post. Scott missing and Peterson gets the rebound. 5.35 to go in the first half. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn at the forum. Game one, best of seven. Allen level. Peterson gets the offensive rebound and is clobbered inside, and he'll go to the line to shoot. Maurice Lucas doing what he has been known for, being an enforcer inside. As Maurice takes Elijah or Sampson blocks him off and says, you're not getting anywhere. I mean, that is what makes a good rebounder. You must keep contact with the guy you're trying to block out. Don't go to the ball until you know you've got him blocked out. Jim Peterson has improved in every category this year. Robert Reed has returned to the ball game, and McCray goes out. Peterson started 14 games when Elijah Wan was hurt, and six when Ralph was out, and came through in both occasions. Lakers by one. Robert Reed is guarding Cooper. Peterson and Lucas. Youth and experience tangled up out there. And another three-second violation called against the Lakers. It'll be against Byron Scott. Turns it over to Houston. Lakers have a small lineup in there, Dick. And now Akeem comes back in the game. So when you're young like Elijah Wan, you don't need much of a rest, do you? Two puffs and you're back in. <laughs> Turnovers are all even now. Winding down to five minutes remaining in the half. Sampson goes in. That's the good and a foul. He challenged Kareem and won it. Kareem with his second personal foul. 
This is being decisive. Little foot fake for a guy his size to make that kind of move, put it on the floor. And Kareem is not used to getting out there and playing that type of defense, Benjamin's defense. That's tough. Sampson, six points and two rebounds. And most of the time, the free throw line has been owned by L.A. But a three-point play by Ralph. And it's 51-49 to 49 as Houston regains the lead. We've had ten ties and six lead changes in this first half. Blocked by Lewis Lloyd. Level does the smart thing. He sends it way to the backcourt. But there are five seconds on the shot clock. And the Lakers can't get a shot off. Sampson, who can handle the ball. Level. Kareem. Out of bounds. Traveling call. Traveling against the Rockets. Houston's biggest lead was eight. The Lakers had a five-point lead after their 13-point flurry. Oh, Kareem. yes! Good, and a foul. He is amazing. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. No stopping him, it seems. I tell you, that was a real power move. He took a blow and still maintained his balance to get that shot off smoothly. And you saw Worthy replace Cooper for the Lakers. Now, Worthy moves to that. They were small out there when Cooper was at the forward spot. With a lot more pressure on Kareem to rebound. Missed the free throw. Foul was on Lloyd, his second, and we have a tie at 51. Level. Off the mark. He hit a couple early. And then has been off the mark his last three times. Level again. Three on two for Houston. And Level throws it away. That's been the problem for Allen Level over the years is that oftentimes he'll play out of control. Just did not read the defense properly. Try to make the spectacular pass. It was another pass easier. And an easy basket. Talking about easy by Kareem. And it's 53 to 51 Lakers. 347 and a 20 second timeout called by Bill Fitch. He's going to bring in Craig Elo right now. A smart fill-in guard who can play three positions. He was a third-round pick three years ago out of Washington State. Well, tomorrow's going to be a big day on CBS, besides the final round of the Byron Nelson Golf Classic and the seventh game of Philadelphia and Milwaukee. What a battle that'll be. It'll be the NBA Draft Lottery, a special edition at the half at 1 o'clock Eastern time. Now, what are the needs of some of these teams, Tommy? Well, Boston will take any big man, as will anybody there, if they're within the first three or four picks. Then the forwards, I think Boston look for a big man. Dallas, uh, definitely another big man. Golden State, a big man. Indiana, maybe a guard. The Knicks, uh, another big man. They need lots of big people. Philadelphia, uh, the, uh, that has, they're looking for maybe a backup guy for uh, Moses Malone. And Phoenix, anything they can get. <laughs> you know, I think there's a possibility that a team like Indiana may trade because they're looking for a point guard. They may trade for one. Steal by Byron Scott. Knocked it away from Samson. Magic to Scott. Four-point Laker lead. That's running a three-on-two situation beautifully by Magic Johnson. And as we mentioned, Elo in the game replacing Allen Level. Elo played well against Sacramento when he was in in the third game of that series. Elijah Wan is held. Foul. Let's check that. It's a jump ball. Worthy, I think, got a piece of the ball from behind him. Here's a lake of fast break. They get it into the hands of Magic. He reads the defense beautifully. He makes it. He takes the ball just far enough to get the defender to commit himself, and then he'll lay off the soft pass. Rambus replaces Lucas, who gets a hand. It's done well. 3-10 remaining in the first half. The Lakers with the ball up by four. Lajuan is guarding Rambus. Elo is on Scott. Kareem, great position on Samson. With Samson guarding Kareem, he's not going to get muscled out of that low post position. If Elijah Wan were to guard him, it would be a much tougher job for Kareem, Kareem to get the position. Elo, the lead. Elijah Wan is fouled by Rambis. Right now, the Lakers have their biggest lead of the ball game, six points. And timeout called by the Lakers with 2.42 to go. Keep in mind, they've won big at home at openings of playoffs in the past. Feels 
so good Coming down, coming down, down You're so right, light and bright Seven up, splashing on the fun Four and cool and clear on everyone Seven up, feels so good Seven up Introducing the Patrick Ewing Collection of high-performance footwear and apparel from Adidas. It's unstoppable. These old-fashioned shingles have worn out before their time. The culprit, insides of mere paper. Ugh. Now these are long-lasting Owens Corning shingles. They have a heart of pink fiberglass, so they shrug off moisture, keep their cool and baking sun, and glide through winter after winter. And that is no snow job. <laughs> Owens Corning, our building products put your house in the pink. Not quite as loud here as it was Thursday night in Dallas, which is a break for James Brown, who will be coming up at the half to tell us what's going on. JB. All right, Dick, thank you very much. Coming up for you on at the half, we'll update you on NBA playoff action from last night in the Eastern Conference between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Philadelphia 76ers. We'll also update you on the other news in around the world of sports, the Montreal Canadiens, who are trying to become the winningest team in professional sports. And Pat O'Brien will come our way and give us a preview of tomorrow's NBA draft lottery. That and more in just a few moments on At the Half. Dick? Thank you very much, JB. And a uh, few minutes left before the end of the half. That Milwaukee-Philadelphia battle tomorrow is going to be packed with a lot of drama. Can Don Nelson finally get the monkey off his back and win a seventh game? 0 for 4, the Bucks. Well, that's not uh, a hard monkey to get off your back. I, I think what really is going to de define who's going to win that game is who produces the better inside game. I think uh, Barkley may be extremely tired. He's been carrying that series on his back on the boards, but Nelson has got the intelligence to really turn things around. He's been in those type of situations before as a player with the Celtics. Elijah Wan missing the free throw. The Lakers, since Houston had that eight-point lead, has outscored the Rockets 21 to 7. Of course, they've always been capable of that kind of a burst. One out of two for Elijah Wan. 2.42 remaining in the hand. What's happened to Mitchell Wiggins? Picked up three fouls, and we haven't seen him since. 12 on the shot clock. Kareem, who leads with 16. Give him two more. 18 for Abdul Jabbar. He is six for six here in this period. Did he? look off the defense that time beautiful shot by Kareem Rockets meanwhile have hit only two of their last 11 shots from the field so they've drawn ice cold and Robert Reed the veteran who played when the Rockets faced the Celtics in 81 for the world title brings Houston to within five two minutes to go in the half Worthy trying to post up Reed doubled now and now we'll call a three-second violation. Credit Houston's defense there. Akeem Olajuwon, credit him, I'll tell you, because as soon as he saw the penetration, that was one form of the Venus flytrap. They forced him left, forced him to the shot blocker. Five-point lead, 140 remaining now in the first half. Sampson, who has the ability to hit from outside at 7-4, cuts the lead to three. But the Lakers will give him that shot. Lucas would have been in a perfect position for the Arambus for the rebound. Robert Reed. So Houston missing some outside shots. And the Lakers up by now seven on Kurt Rambis play. Isn't it beautiful when you got a middleman on a fast break like Magic Johnson? And that's one thing the Houston Rockets don't have. Once they lost Lucas as the point guard. Reed's done a good job, but he's no magic. Samson. 
Jackson is fouled inside and will go to the line with 54 seconds to go. The foul is on Kareem, his third. They're going to watch Magic Johnson. Once the ball gets in his hands, he reads the defense. He spotted the man, Rambis, behind the defender who had lost his attention. That's all he needs is for that back man of the defense to lose his attention and somebody will get an easy shot. Kareem goes to the bench with three personal fouls, leads the Lakers with 20, and Maurice Lucas comes in for him. Sampson misses the free throw. One out of two. Six-point lead for the Lakers. Now their inside game, obviously, is not going to be as effective without Kareem. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see them go to James Worthy a lot. They did there. Blocked by Elijah Wan and a jump off. That's what the two defenders inside can do. And in fact, Elijah Wan has 30 blocked shots in the playoffs. The Lakers as a team have 39 so far. You know, he can stand further away from you, and you're not sure whether he's going to go for the block or not because of his quickness and speed. 35 seconds and 17 on the shot clock. And a Laker foul. They are into the penalty, and Houston will shoot. Maurice Lucas commits his second personal foul. Well, here's a little banging on Ralph. Uh, get outside, Ralph. Another four inches, and I'll let you have the ball. But uh, one bounce too many. Sampson on the line. And he missed everything. I tell you, I admire Ralph Sampson. He told me at the All-Star game that he wanted to become the leader of this ball club. And since that point, he's proved it to me. 33 seconds to go. Five-point Laker lead. And you talked about the man in the middle who can push it up. Johnson with the ball now. 11 points, 11 assists, and three rebounds. 11 on the shot. Johnson is the shot blocked by Sampson. And Pat Riley is screaming off the Laker bench. He won The shot went so high up in the air, but you watch the ability of Akeem to, and Sampson to leap. Beautiful. Hilo commits the foul. Only the 14th foul and the first within two minutes for the Rockets. 15 seconds to go in the half. A magical used that block of his layup attempt against those two guys later on. Once you block the shot, you can play with that. Magic will shoot. Craig Elo with a second foul, and already Bill Fitch knows that Elo has his hands full against Magic Johnson. He's just trying to buy time with a guy he said was his ideal 12th man. He has Allen Level on the bench who was out of control. Mitchell Wiggins, who had three personal fouls and went to the bench early despite some good shooting. Well, they're trying to really challenge Magic, get somebody on him, make him work the ball up the court, slow it down a little bit, so they'll use some fouls to try and accomplish that. Six-point lead, two oh! seconds to go. Traveling with time run down, and that'll be the end of the first half here at the Forum. Lakers and Rockets, game one. The Lakers lead it 64 to 58 in a game in which the Rockets had an eight point lead, but a 13 point burst in the second period turned it in favor of L.A. James Brown coming up in a moment. CBS Sports coverage of the NBA playoffs. Team straight to take a lead, which they had the rest of the half. Underway third period, Magic to Kareem up into eight points and that's their biggest lead what a play to come out of the locker room with beautiful robert reed gets it into sampson sampson comes back against kareem keep in mind that abdul jabbar has three personal fouls and neither sampson or elijah Wan are in that kind of foul trouble yet worthy stepped on the line turns it over to houston Rodney McRae does really a great job on James Worthy. He bumps him. Excellent defender. Besides Elijah Wan's 18, Samson has 13 and Wiggins 10. He spent most of the half on the bench. 
They double team Sampson who finds McCray. Elijah Wan. And Kareem got a piece of the ball, and now a Laker foul. Well, you saw Sampson really double teamed, and he doesn't find the man until much too late. And McCray could have gone up the other side and made a much easier shot, but there's that Akeem guy again getting inside for the rebound. Second personal on Magic Johnson, and here is Elijah Wan, who is eighth in the league in scoring, third in block shots, 11th in steals, and was 19 rebounds shy of qualifying as the fourth best rebounder in the league. Hard to believe he's still learning this game. <laughs> his mind and his temperament hasn't, uh, doesn't need to be tuned up. I'll tell you, block him out. Always, always, always. Minute gone by in the second half. McCray sticks with Worthy. And Elijah Wan with the rebound. Six rebounds for Akeem. And Akeem slams in the follow-up, and a Laker Magic Johnson is slow getting up. And now we're going to have a 20-second timeout called by the Lakers. Magic got decked needless to say if this man were not able to get in there their whole fast break might just dis disappear well that's jumping a few steps though and, but he's uh, had a bad knee and he's had trouble with it during the season but watch this situation now as the trailer Elijah Wan just out hustles Kareem gets inside him making that speed pay off with a tremendous tip in by the fourth man up. That's making that speed work for you. There he goes, hitting the deck, and uh, Gary Vitti, the Laker trainer, is talking to him, and he seems to be flexing that left knee, Tom. Well, he's had trouble with that knee. Remember, he had fluid on it, and he went through extensive exercises. He's going to limp, and limp noticeably as he comes off the floor. And he'll be replaced by Michael Cooper. So let's watch that very carefully. You pointed out at the very outset that the one real difference between these teams is Magic Johnson's ability to bring up the ball and control the ball and handle it, something the Rockets don't have that you No, know, he's not a very fast guy, so anything uh, that is going to impede his ability to push it up the court is going to be hurtful, too. Byron Scott coming around a screen. Cooper for three. Rambis lines up with it. Scott looking inside, Abdul-Jabbar. And it goes for Kareem has 24 points. He has been marvelous at 25.2 in the playoff. Seems to play better with each game. Sampson comes back, and it drops for out. Sampson scored only two in the first period. Tommy, and he has 15 now. I'll tell you, that was a beautiful hook shot by Sampson. He got great position. Worthy and close, and it counts. So the points are coming fast and furious right now, and they're coming from close to the hoop. That was a quick hitter. The Lakers like to get it to him before the defense gets set up. James Worthy in a low post. Five-point lead for L.A. There's McCray, and he got went back door, actually, and got in there as Magic Johnson touching that tender knee, getting set to come back in. Cooper misses a drive, and here come the Rockets trying to cut it to one. And it's Robert Reed going in. Offensive foul, and that will be his third three on Robert Reed. And Magic returns to the relief of the Laker fans, although he still seems to be no limping noticeably. Johnson, he's had some knee difficulties. Not that he needed an operation or anything, but sometimes he gets fluid on the knee. And anything that slows down his ability to push the ball up the floor fast could be hurtful to the Laker fast break. So we'll watch and see how Magic reacts to that. Dick Stockton, Tom Heinsohn, and James Brown here at the Foreman Inglewood. This is game one. We're in the Western Conference Finals and the world champion Lakers with Magic Johnson. A little slowed with that knee problem. Lead 70 to 67 against the tough Houston club. Kareem misses a sky hook. Elijah Wan may have knocked it off his own man, and he did. Tight game. Streaks have been a big factor here. And Houston trying to show that they belong with the likes of the Lakers in this series. Kareem, who has 24 already. 
Scott loses Reed, who slips and fell. Elijah Wan gets the rebound. Lloyd, good open court player, hasn't shown it much so far today. Worthy picks up Reed. And a loose ball foul against Houston. Hakeem Olajuwon, and that'll be his second personal foul. He and Ralph each with two. You know, a lot of people don't want to block out Olajuwon, but watch what happens. Magic says, I'm getting in front of you, and Olajuwon just kind of gives a good push and knocked the air out of Magic. He went, oof. 8.40 to go. Worthy gets the basket and a foul, and he's in double figures. Keep in mind that James Worthy, a 20-point scorer, has struggled against Houston during the regular season. He now has 10 points and can up the Laker lead now. I can see why he had trouble against the Lakers, Dick. I mean, against the Rockets. Elijah almost blocked that shot, and he was about five feet away. To six. Eight and a half remaining in the third. Lloyd, way off the mark. Doesn't look like Houston's going to survive with outside shooting in the long run against this team. Magic Johnson with a great move. Shows no ill effects on that play of his knee. Lloyd feeding Elijah Wan. Inside is foul. Well, Elijah Wan is really walking. I, excuse me, really running. He's getting up, putting that pressure. Uh, here comes Magic, length of the floor. Knee or no knee, he's going to take it to the hoop. And they angle him off. That's an awfully difficult shot. Meanwhile, Magic Johnson has been charged with his third personal foul. He and Kareem each with three, and Elijah Wan shooting. Very surprised at how well the Lakers have contained the speed of the Rockets so far in this ballgame. They've done it very well with very little time to get ready for it. Keep in mind that they won four out of five regular season games, and Kareem, who has 24, kind of brutalized Houston in the regular season. Magic looking inside. Falls down. Eight on the shot clock. Wild pass. Last touch by Reed. The Lakers were fortunate there. Five seconds to shoot. 7.49 on the clock, third period. Seven-point lead, L.A. Kareem, rebound by Sampson. McCray. Lloyd here. Gets in and Scott makes the defensive play of the ball game. Magic. But it's early here with 7.20 to go and a nine-point lead for the Lakers. Their biggest of the game. Lloyd. Elijah Wan. You know, Tommy, I'm getting the impression that sooner or later, either Samson or Elijah Wan break a string with that strong inside offensive play. I think you're right. But uh, Magic Johnson is keeping the pace of their game right where Pat Riley wants it. Kareem gets Samson in the air. And Elijah Wan gets the rebound. That is the first time. To... Offensive foul against Lewis Lloyd. But that was the first time, Dick, that the Rockets really got a quick outlet off a rebound to start a fast break. Magic is struggling, but he's playing and playing well. And the Lakers lead by seven. Men, we're going to live off the land. It's going to be rough. Either you pitch in or shape up. When you're ship far up. from home, you can't beat a Honda portable generator. You get 1,000 watts of power when you're nowhere near an electrical outlet. Commander Fred, can we come in? Byron Scott makes a fantastic defensive play against the fast break of the Rockets, and look at this. Saves the ball beautifully to Kareem, but watch the intelligence of Magic Johnson weave through. The Rockets playing him for the pass. He sees it and takes it strong to the hoop. I mean, he's doing a head game on the defense of the Rockets right now while they're trying to protect the fast break. And as you can see, the Lakers with a big edge on fast break points. 
And it's been the Lakers, a team that's put the speed on the Rockets a lot more than Houston has done. And as Tom said at the outset, that's the one hope the Rockets have, is to use the speed of their center and their power forward, Elijah Wan and Sampson, to break down the Lakers. Want to remind you, tomorrow night, tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock Eastern time, it'll be Game 7 of the Bucks and the 76ers. Can Charles Barkley carry the team again against the gimpy Sidney Moncrief, who's an inspirational leader for the Bucks? We gotta watch it. There's a pad on the left knee of Magic Johnson. Gets it into Kareem. Illegal defense, and this will be a technical foul call. Second time on the illegal defense call against Houston. Now Robert Reed that time was way over the imaginary line that runs down the lane. And once you go past that line, you've got to go double a low post or double a man with the ball. Scott will shoot. What about those veterans on the Sixers? How Julius Irving and Bobby Jones have played. Well, that's going to be a pretty tough game for those guys. You know, then at the advanced stage, one day turnaround. And in the intensity in the seventh game is really tough on an aged player. Brent Musburger and Billy Cunningham will be courtside at the Mecca in Milwaukee for game seven tomorrow at one o'clock. Every game seven is always special. One game and someone goes home, someone advances. The Celtics are waiting. Magic yeah. tried to make that extra pass to Rambus, but the Lakers still wind up with the ball. What great hand movement that, that time by Elijah Wan. Him to the shot and Elijah Wan brought his left hand down and almost picked off the pass. Eight on the shot clock. Wiggins who's into the ball game guarding Magic. No basket and a foul before the shot. Here's the hand movement by Elijah Wan. Goes up and then brings that left hand down. I'll tell you that's being a goalie of the first order in soccer. Man, that was <laughs> terrific. Meanwhile Ralph Sampson picked up his third personal on that last play. 6.09 remaining in the third period, nearly halfway through. Lakers by eight. Kareem gives the Lakers their biggest lead of the game. Boy, he had the whole one side of the court to roll to. Sampson just held contact with him too long. Kareem has averaged 33 with 64% shooting against the Rockets this year. Well on his way to his average. In a crowd, McCray quickly gets it out to Reed with eight seconds on the shot clock. Double team away from the hoop. McCray on a great pass from Elijah Wan. Well, they didn't handle the first double team too well, but he sure did the second time they did it. Nice bounce pass. Lead is eight for the Lakers. Game two will be Tuesday night here at the Forum. Games three and four at the Summit in Houston Friday night and next Sunday afternoon. You'll see both of them on CBS. Rambus. Kurt Rambus. With a 10-point lead again for the Lakers. The Laker guards, starting guards of Reed and Lloyd, are two for 14. Wiggins has come in to try to unleash him. Kareem saves it to Magic. Crowd ready to explode. GTS challenges BMW 520 E and Mercedes 190E to a test of performance. Overall, America's GTS dominates the legendary Germans and is under $12,000. LeBaron GTS, we built an American hero. Only Chrysler Plymouth gives you real American values with $500 or $1,000. made a pair of bird shoes for last year's MVP. Yep. Well, they made a pair of magic shoes for this year's MVP. Okay, Magic, show me what you got. The bird shoe, the magic shoe. Choose your weapon from Converse. 
It's brewed in America and in other great beer drinking countries. It's the only beer that must, by license and authority, always use Bavarian hops for flavor and be sent back to Munich to be tested by German brewmasters, tested for taste and quality. It's Lohenbrau, and that's how you get 600 years of Bavarian heritage in one smooth American beer. This world calls for Lohenbrau right now. For seven teams, the NBA draft lottery could be the key to a winning future. See it live at the half tomorrow on CBS Sports. You're going to see a great pass by Magic Johnson. He reads the defense. That's the difference. It was a bullet. I think it would have been clocked at 95 miles an hour on the speed gun. Look at that from another angle. Wham! Right through the defense, and Elijah Wan got burned. and 16 assists for Magic Johnson. We are in the round prior to the NBA Finals, and everything gets turned up a notch. The Lakers, who have been there many times, and the Rockets, who have been there once in the last five years, the only team other than the Celtics and Sixers who have beaten the Lakers in a playoff series in the last five years. But they're trailing by 12, 425 remaining in the third. running out of time on the shot clock get the shot in time Mitchell Wiggins with 12 points he had 10 of them in the first period six of seven before he picked up three fouls and had to go to the bench winding down to four minutes to go in the third period lead is 10 Kareem looking for the cutter Johnson not there and Kareem will go to the line on a Houston foul Wiggins just got this shot off at the 24-second buzzer. I gotta tell you, but this is the type of shot that inspires a team. It's a must-go shot, or you're in serious trouble, and they hang back quickly against the fast break. Meanwhile, Ralph Sampson fouled Kareem, and that's four on Sampson. We may be seeing the likes of Jim Peterson before long, as Kareem hits the free throw, going now for his 28th point of the game. Needless to say, without either one of the twin towers who Phil Fitch wants to play as close to 40 minutes as possible, their offense suffers. They've never really gotten that speed game going with the two big men who can run up and down the floor. And Kareem has played into their, they played into Kareem's team. 28 points for Abdul Jabbar. Triple team on Elijah Wong. Reed, long range hits. But I tell you, Houston is depending on long-range bombs now. The Lakers' defense has been magnificent. They're not getting any easy shots. The Lakers are doing subtle things against their fast break. Kareem. And inside. Underneath, and it's going to be Rockets' ball on the side. You know, Dick, what they're doing to stop the Rockets' fast break, the Lakers are getting all over the rebounder. Last touch by Houston before it went out of bounds, so it's L.A. ball. And uh, when they get all over the rebounder, they get an extra two counts, the Lakers, to get back. Magic Johnson fouled inside, and a feed from Kareem. He got three inside, and that'll be a team's third personal foul. going to watch a super look again reading the defense as the double team there's my open man and of course he loves to get it to magic 318 to go in the third period magic johnson 17 points another bundle of assists 16 and running and picked up an additional knee guard in this ball game Once again, a 12-point lead for the Lakers, who led by six and a half, and by two after one period. Turnover off the hands of Akeem. Lakers savvy and experienced, telling the story at this point. And Houston is under siege at this time, with 2.53 to go in the third. 
That'll be an offensive foul against Byron Scott. His first foul. You know, Magic knows when to press the fast break and when to pull it out and what matchup to use to the benefit of the Lakers. Worthy quickly doubles the key and fouls him, and Elijah Wan will go to the line. What a struggle for Elijah Wan and Samson Largy today. We're going to see Kareem must. Samson doesn't have that great lower body strength, so Kareem can muscle him. Well, it may not happen this year, but someday they're still together. Elijah Wan and probably the best one-two punch maybe in NBA history when this team gets experience, maybe another player to help them along. They make great strides and they're not that far away. You're sure right there. I'll tell you, if I were Bill Fitch right now, I'd be saying we are going to be in the picture for a long time to come. This is just their first time in the swimming pool, he might say. But it's just game one and it's a 10 point ball game. has put together sensational back-to-back -back games from Thursday night, game six in Dallas. And this game one here at the Forum. And a hold on Samson. Take a look at Worthy Steele. Akeem trying to create some fast break opportunity that time. But Worthy right there. Too long a pass on the outlet. You've got to get the ball to the side. That's what they haven't been doing. Two minutes to go in the third period. Wiggins guarded by Cooper. Not giving Wiggins an inch. Elijah Wan over Lucas. And here comes Cooper. To Worthy. Crashing the boards and a loose ball foul called against the Lakers. It'll be Michael Cooper with the foul. The Lakers have outrun the Houston Rockets to a fairly well today. 141 on the clock, Tommy. I tell you, Bill Fitch, when he looks at this game film, and he will, because that's the type of coach he is going to see, his team has not really been up beating the game as much as they should. And that's been a big weapon for them all season long. And a hand for Kareem as he goes out. 28 points, four rebounds, and three block shots for the 39-year-old Abdul-Jabbar. Goodmanson comes in again, and a good time for Pat Riley to give Kareem perhaps a longer rest than usual. Right, because uh, he's going to do it around the quarter timeout, which gives him an extra minute. And right now, the Rockets have to make some inroads. Goodmanson can't get up the floor, not quite as smart. Maybe their low post game will develop. Sampson playing with four fouls. Elijah Wan has three. Magic missed inside. And the Rockets can cut it to eight with less than a minute and a half remaining in the third. It's a cute little push by Wiggins that time on Magic to make him miss that shot. Elijah Wan inside and Lucas fouls him. There's nothing Lucas could do. You know, but smart substitution here by Pat Riley. He's going to put Goodmanson in, who's not quite as fast getting up and down the court after Sampson and Elijah Wan are tired so that the speed factor may not be as big a differential. Well, he's still using the Twin Towers, and we haven't seen Jim Peterson come in. When do you bring in the third forward off the base? I don't think you're going to see Jim Peterson unless it's absolutely necessary. They've got to use these two big guys now to make their movement. Elijah Wan missed two free throws. Is that a sign of fatigue at all? I don't think so, but uh, they are not really getting that fast game going. Worthy. And here's Lucas on the other side. Lucas, a great weak side rebounder. You give him an inch, he's got the rebound and it's in. Comes to play when playoff time arrives. 52 seconds to go. Samson misses the alley-oop. Goodmanson winds up with it. 19 on the shot clock, 42 now remaining in the third period. And a 12-point Laker lead. They have successfully maintained that 12-point margin here in the second half. Wiggins 
trying to blanket magic. Oh, wow! Everything going right for Urban Johnson today. McCray with a reverse layup, and 20 seconds remain, and the Lakers can play for the last shot. The Rockets are just not getting the ball up the floor quick enough. The defense of the lake is getting back before the ball does. You've got to push the ball at this defense. Six seconds. Watch the clock. Worthy going in strong. Goodmanson. Blocked by Elijah Wise. That'll do it for the third period. And that's the end of the third period with the score. Lakers 94, Rockets 82. And we'll return to the Forum in Inglewood after this word from your local station. This is CBS. Tommy Lasorda here, introducing the Honda All-Star. We've got quite a team this year. Leading off and cutting the infield down the side, the Honda Lawnmower. In the outfield, covering left, center, and right, the Honda Lawn Tractor. Tearing up those baselines, the Honda Tiller. And the Honda Generator, the real power in the lineup. Without it, I wouldn't have any fans. In Grand Forks, see Acme Electric Motor, and in Fergus Falls, Steve Cycle. TV's most colorful locale just happens to be the mythical county of Cornfield, populated by the all-too-real characters you've met and loved for 17 years on television's happiest hour, Hee Haw. Joining the regular gang this week with their current country hits and hilarious hijinks will be country music's brightest superstar, Willie Nelson, popular hit songwriter Chris Christopherson, unique TV news and weather team Ben and Butch McCain, and new star J.T. Jackson. Join us, Hee Haw, Saturdays at 5. KXJV Channel 4, Valley City, Fargo. America's game. It's fantastic. CBS Sports coverage of the NBA playoffs is sponsored by the new Chrysler Corporation. They don't want to be the biggest, they just want to be the best. Miller Beer. Miller, made the American way since 1855. And by Milky Way. A Milky Way a day helps you work, rest, and play. Let's take a look now at this game. The Rockets stayed close with the Lakers with Akeem scoring 12 of his 26 in the first period, a two-point affair. And then in the second period, Kareem went to work with 14 points, with 13 in a row by the Lakers, opened up a six-point lead. And then Magic Johnson scored 10 points, numerous assists, and have opened up a 12-point lead. And no play may more illustrate how things are going for the Lakers today at both ends, particularly offensively, than this play by Magic. I'll tell you, they wanted him to shoot more in the middle of the season. He's showing me some determination right now to become a scorer. A double team slips it up there be over the top of one of the big guys. Kareem with 28, Magic 22, Scott with 12, and Worthy with 11. For Houston, Elijah Wan has 26, Sampson 15, and Wiggins 14. And as we start the fourth period, Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn, Sampson has four fouls, Elijah Wan three, and they're both in there. You know, this is not an insurmountable lead for the Rockets to overcome if they can get that fast break game going. They start out with a long bomb. Wiggins, pushes it inside, out of bounds, Laker ball. They, were, they had to settle for the long shot because the Lakers are just not letting him get that close in play. And they're even making that long bomb difficult. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're not getting any 18-footers. Worthy working his way against McCray. Cooper. Lucas with a sky hook of his own. And Elijah Wan with his 12th rebound. Elijah Wan got a piece of that. But they're not converting these things into real pushes up the court. Sampson hits the jumper. And Ralph with 17 points. And it's a 10-point affair. Sampson, by the way, has hit his last six shots from the field. So he may be getting underway now. You know, the emotional lift comes if they can get three baskets in a row. The Rockets are liable to go sky high. They're an explosive team.
magic against Wiggins. Goodmanson follow up. They got to block out somebody. If it isn't Kareem in the game, it's got to be the other center. Well, going for the block. Judgment of when to go for the block is important for the Rockets. Samson didn't have a shot at it. When he missed it, it was an easy rebound for Goodmanson. Byron Scott will check back in, and Magic goes out of the game. He should get a great ovation from the crowd. Houston struggle from the field. Their guards have not been hitting at all. And that's been the difference. The crane going in and Sampson making Elijah one on the follow. Keen with 28 points in the game. And you know when he scores. Block him out always. Easier said than done. As teams have learned and will learn. Nine on the clock. Scott for three. And it goes in. And they're going to give it to Lucas with the tip. Eight points for Lucas. And the Rockets can't make any headway. A little more than two minutes gone by. Fourth period. McCray out to Reed. Top of the key. And here comes Scott. Worthy. Those long rebounds will kill you on the missed shot. But they know how to get it up the sideline fast. And we have a timeout. A TV timeout has been called. Allen Level will check back in for the beleaguered Rockets, who trail 100 to 86. Giving that extra effort makes winners. The All You Can Be, sponsored by the U.S. Army. From the moment he became a Portland Trailblazer, Clyde Drexler has captivated the NBA. Fans marvel at his superb athletic versatility, one that can play great defense and then explode on the fast break. His appeal as a crowd pleaser has flourished by creating some of the league's most daring plays. He literally rises above the competition, for Clyde Drexler strives to be the best he can be. Hey, that was a great answer. Where'd you learn about computers? In the Army. Uh, you were in the Army? Yeah. And now they're helping pay your way through college. How come you know so much? How do you think I got here? Qualify for the GI Bill and the Army College Fund and earn $17,000 for college for only a two-year enlistment or $25,200 for a four-year enlistment. What you doing here? Airborne. You were airborne? Find your future in the Army. You used to jump out of airplanes? the Lakers have opened up their largest lead of the game, 14 points, and when you consider the fact that they have a lot of veterans coming off a grueling game in Dallas on Thursday night, having to play on Saturday, and the Rockets had a tough game, too, but the Lakers have had their legs a lot better than the Rockets. Do you think they're trying to give Houston an early message here? Well, I would say this, that uh, physically, it was probably more difficult for the Lakers to have one day of rest, but they had the advantage of being playoff tested and having an experienced game plan against the Rockets. I think what was really difficult for the Rockets was trying to get together their game plan in one day to attack the Lakers. So that one day layoff may have hurt the Rockets more than the Lakers. Now what about effects between one game to another? Most of the time that doesn't have a great effect. If it's a real blowout of proportions, it'll be very hard on this Rocket team. But Bill Fitch has been there before. They're going to have to rely on Bill Fitch an awful lot to keep their daubers up if they get blown out here this afternoon. And don't forget, we'll have the seventh and deciding game of that exciting Philadelphia-Milwaukee series tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern time. Paul Pressey and Julius Irving. But Pressey could be a big factor for Milwaukee tomorrow. Oh, he's been playing great. And with Moncrief not really being in there, more falls on his shoulders and on Terry Cummings' shoulders. Elijah Wan and Sampson have 45 points between them. The other three starters for the Rockets, a total of 18. Wiggins comes in and travels before the shot. So they've got to keep the two in there. Steal by Wiggins on Cooper. That's a macho, macho battle, isn't it, between two fine defensive players? Well, they got to get aggressive, and they are. They're coming back, and they're trying to press. Uh, Cooper is used to handling the ball against a good defender. 
It's under nine minutes remaining in the fourth period. And if the Rockets are going to make a run, this may be it for them. Lucas going in strong. And McCray, Wiggins ahead of the field, will get two more. And it's a ten-point game. And one of the few times we saw them look up the court to see if anybody was open, either down the middle or on the sideline. We've been looking at fast break efficiency, and that could come as a result of turnovers. The Lakers have had the edge today with a lot more breaks. Cooper comes back, and this is the shot. Sampson. I don't think Riley wants to have outside shooting from his team right now. McCray throws it away into the hands of Scott. There was a fast break chance they didn't capitalize. But they got the good outlet, and then the middleman threw it away. Cooper misses a three attempt. Out of bounds. Laker ball. So here at the Forum in Inglewood, Pat Riley's Lakers, the defending champions, who have been to the finals four straight years, lead the Houston Rockets 100 to 90 with 8.15 to go in the fourth period, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with 28 points back in the game for the Lakers. And believe it or not, Kareem is going to be fresher than the younger players coming down the stretch. Magic Johnson gets his warm-up jacket off. Worthy missed. Look at him run up the court, Kareem. I mean, he's sprinting. Like Power Memorial days in <laughs> when he was in high school. A couple of minutes on the bench. That'll do it for you. Under eight minutes to go. McCray misses. Those outside shots are great when they go in. They kill you when they don't. And they're going to call a Houston foul. Watch Kareem sprint up the court after a couple of minutes on the bench. Put your head down. I'm getting Samson. <laughs> he's not outrunning me. Foul is on level. Worthy goes out and Magic Johnson returns. You know, that was a psych job, too, on Samson, that running up that hard. He said, baby, you're not going to be able to beat me for sure, and I'm going to show you. Scott from Magic. Great pass. Great pass from Magic Johnson, and that wasn't an easy one. 17 assists for Magic Johnson, who has been averaging 15 the last three playoffs. There's Mitchell Wiggins hitting outside, but the Rockets have not been that successful. He has 20 points off the bench, twice his playoff average. 7-10 to go, fourth period. Kareem. And traveling, I believe, call against Abdul-Jabbar. Robert Reed comes in to give Rodney McCray a breather now for Houston. You know what the Rockets do on their fast break to middlemen? They look too much in front and try and make the spectacular pass when it's not there. Under seven minutes to go. Fourth period. Samson. Kareem the rebound. Houston still has not been able to work the ball inside much today. Lucas goes in. Foul. At the conclusion of the game, Tom and I will select the Miller Lite most valuable player of the game, and in conjunction with the award, Miller Lite will present a check for $1,000 to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society in that player's name. Timeout called by the Lakers. 6.47 to go. They're up by 10. My work at the bank is really a challenge. Every day is different, but it's always demanding. So when things ease up, I go for my Milky Way right out of the fridge. Relax, think about being outdoors later. Delicious. You get the goodness of a quarter cup of milk in every bar. There's milk, natural cane and corn sugars, and thick, thick chocolate in a Milky Way bar. I've loved Milky Way since I was a little girl. A Milky Way day helps you work, rest, and play. Every bottle of Miller comes with a clear promise. Miller's made the American way. A promise that Miller beer has been brewed naturally. Born and brewed in the USA. And above all, a promise of purity. A promise that Miller beer contains no additives, no preservatives. Miller's made the American way. Miller beer. Purity you can see, quality you can taste. You've heard the bad news. Import car prices are going up. Now GMs raise theirs. Well, Chrysler won't raise prices on their 86 U.S. built cars. So the new Dodge Omni and Plymouth Horizon Americas will be almost 2,500 less than Honda Civic sedan. Dodge Daytona Turbo Z almost 2,300 less than Mazda RX-7. And Chrysler Fifth Avenue, 1,600 less than Olds 98 Regency.
And Chrysler gives a 550 protection plan. Now you've heard the good news, America. The Byron Nelson Golf Classic continues tomorrow on CBS Sports. Third round leaders in the Byron Nelson Classic, Andy Bean and Bobby Watkins, still tied. And four golfers are tied at seven under, one stroke from the lead. And you'll see the final round of the Byron Nelson tomorrow. John McEnroe, they taking some time off from tennis, having a great time here at the Forum. Tatum O'Neill next to him. There she is. And, of course, McEnroe, we saw him when the Celtics and the Lakers played earlier in the year here at the Forum. Jerry West, the general manager of the league. I'll tell you, what a great basketball player he was. I mean, we played so many times here against him, and he's translated that knowledge into some good duty here as general manager. Helped to put together this ball club. He told me some real good things, like Samson doesn't like to really run all the time, and certain things they're going to try and match up on getting worthy out onto the fast break by playing guard on defense early in the ball game. I mean, he's right at the top of his game knowing what's going on here. I mean, he knows something about basketball. A lot Jerry. of basketball, <laughs> Jerry knows. Uh, as you look at this game right now, and, and the 10-point lead for the Lakers, how are the Rockets playing? What kind of great you know, the Rockets have played about 50% of what their potential is. They've made an awful lot of mistakes here, and they're still only, well, 11 down now. Level McRae, Reed, and Roy shooting 33 percent so Houston is struggling from the perimeter as well Elijah Wong to Wiggins Cooper all over him four on the clock level a line drive looked like a desperation shot a three-pointer check count that and it's 103 95 and the lead is down to eight now as level sometimes out of control can also make you smile Kareem all jarred at the moment three-point attempt a big one by Byron Scott he made a key defensive play in the third period and that's a big three-pointer to answer level shot Sampson inside comes right back and Ralph with 19 in the game did he spread out on uh, Abdul Jabbar to really get that good position nine-point lead for the Lakers 106-97 back is Maurice Lucas so the Lakers are answering what the Houston Rockets are dishing out. Right. I didn't see how Lucas got free, but you can't allow him to take that 15-foot shot. Sam yes. tries to draw the foul, and he can't do it. Little Harlem Globetrotter move. Lucas from Magic. Right. I'm going to tell you, this is a great move by Kareem coming up. And he says, behind the back. And uh, I got the fancy stuff, too. Everything but sweet Georgia Brown. <laughs> Double on Kareem. Magic. Doubled himself. And it's 110 to 97 as we wind down to five minutes to go in the fourth. When you double team Kareem Abdul Jabbar, he only gives it up when he wants to give it up, and something good usually happens. Samson is held, jump ball, held ball. Well, the Rockets may be young and they may have a future, and this is just game one, but the Lakers are teaching him something today. They spin Samson into the defense, and that is magic. Oh, it's my basketball. It's my building. Go home. <laughs> and the Lakers are beating the Rockets to the ball almost every time. Knocked out of bounds from behind. But Magic already knew where the open men were on that push up the court. That's that experience of running the middle of the fast break. 16 on the shot clock. The pests are all around Kareem right now. Scott for three. Sampson the rebound. 47 between the two of them. Sampson and Elijah Wan. Wiggins misses. Elijah Wan is held. And Magic Johnson says, yeah, that's true. It's a foul. That's the type of play that the Lakers use so well, though, to push it up quickly and get their big guy in a low post so nobody can double him. And that, that, time Wiggins, that time Dick Wiggins took the shot, 
and Elijah Wan was is open in the low post. Sampson goes out of the ball game with 19 points. He has four fouls, and Jim Peterson comes in. That was the first team foul by the Lakers in this final period. Quick pass to Wiggins. Wiggins buries it, 4-10 to go, and it's an 11-point lead for the Lakers. Wiggins has a career playoff high now of 22 points. Under four minutes on the clock. I mean, this game is a tribute to Magic Johnson. Boy, he's just got everything right. Kareem inside, tipped up. Peterson battling for the loose ball and has it. Gets it to level. Three on two, Houston. Reed misses the shot. Level is there. Shuffles it to Wiggins in the corner. And there's Reed again. The Rockets finally make good. So they had another fast break opportunity and it took them a while to score. But it's a nine point game now. Around the two minute mark, it's going to get into uh, the half court offense for sure. Kareem to Scott. He's had a big game today. Oh! Won't know by the numbers, but you will by the key plays. Magic keeps it alive, and the Lakers say, let's not get flustered and rusty. Kareem, basket good. That's right, Jack. One step to the middle that time, and he was so overplayed, a good spin move. Watch him set up the good angle to come back to his left with one dribble there, and then a spin back, an easy shot. We have 2.53 remaining in the fourth. For over 30 years, Liberty Mutual has helped us make London Fog a safer place to work. That's why we believe in Liberty. After all, we know something about protection, too. That's going to be a continuing theme throughout this entire series. And what about the guard shooting, where the Lakers really came to play today? Well, Magic Johnson, I think, was most important in the way he handled the offense of the Lakers, making sure that they didn't get anything but good shots. Still a lot of time remaining, Tom, just under three minutes. And even though the Rockets haven't made much headway on the Lakers, they're down by 11, and it's certainly within range. What do they have to do? Well, their inside game, but Samson's out right now taking a blow, so it's going to hang on the shoulders more than likely of Akeem. The Laker defense is really going to go and double-team Elijah on, and he's going to have to find the open man, and those rocket guards are going to have to hit from outside. The lead is 12 now. Lakers maintain a 12-point lead through most of the... Third period. Kareem, by the way, has 31 points. Keep in mind, he averaged 33 against the Rockets in the regular season, including a 46-point effort. Seven on the shot clock. He didn't get the basket. Wiggins, I lost control. Akeem with a blind pass. Lakers running. Stop. Is fouled. You know what I like about the Lakers? Here we are, 227. They are still pushing it at the Rockets' defense, and they're only going to take intelligent shots. But watch Akeem, <laughs> the intelligent pass here. Wiggins gets the ball, should have made the shot. Poor attempt there. But it goes to show that uh, even in that area of the game, which is the toughest for a center to get down, double teaming, Elijah Wan is improving. Byron Scott with 227 remaining made a key block and save that resulted in a Magic Johnson basket that I think had an effect on the Rockets earlier. 220 remaining. 13 point lead for the Lakers. Allen Level pounding his way in gets the basket. Well, that's what they have with Allen Level. A little penetration at the guard spot. With Reed in the backcourt, forget about the penetration. He's not quick enough. Level and Reed, two men on the court for the Rockets. Played in the NBA Championship Series against Boston. Two minutes remaining, and Kareem misses a five-footer. 
Wiggins racing the hoop is foul. If Bill Fitch doesn't concentrate and they have practices for the next couple of days on looking up the court after the rebound for the outlets, I'll be very surprised because I think that's the element that has held the speed advantage back from the Rockets. So here's Mitchell Wiggins. Tomorrow at 1 o'clock, the Milwaukee Bucks will try to win a seventh game for the first time in their history against the Philadelphia 76ers. The winner will play the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Final. And the winner of that battle will face the survivor between Houston and the Lakers playing game one here. 143 remaining. And a nine-point lead and a whistle. Jim Peterson committing the foul, his second. Tomorrow, besides that Milwaukee-Philadelphia pivotal game, we'll have live and a special edition of At the Half the NBA Draft Lottery. Now, they won't be picking players. Keep in mind that we've been speculating as to who some of the great players coming out would be and some of the hardship people who have announced, but we'll only know the order of the first seven or eight picks. Kareem goes out of the ball game and listen to the crowd. 31 points for him. 39 years old. People have thrown everything at him, and he's had an answer for everyone. Six rebounds and three blocks as well. Goodmanson replaces him. Time remaining. Cooper, all over Reed. Ten on the shot clock. Level. Long three-point play. Magic to stop. Cooper will bring it out with 1.15 to go. So the Lakers are going to take the 1-0 lead in this series and win it home as they always seem to do in the first round of a playoff series. You know, Bill Fish ought to have an easy job getting the, the Rockets not to feel too upset about this thing because uh, they really didn't have time to prepare their game plan. They played lousy and they were still in it all the way. All they need to do is get some good things nailed down and they'll really be in this series. And it was kind of easier for the Lakers to get ready on the short door. It sure was, because they're more experienced about their game plans than perhaps the Rockets are because of uh, the years they've played together. Game two will be Tuesday night here at the Forum. And we'll be with you for games three and four from the Summit in Houston Friday night and next Sunday afternoon. Allen Level off the rim, and that will not count. A timeout was called by the Rockets with one minute to go. 115 to 105. For all intents and purposes, this game is history, and we'll be back in a moment. And the Miller, most valuable player of the game, is Magic Johnson with 24 points, 18 assists, and seven rebounds. And Miller Light is proud to present a check for $1,000 to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society on behalf of Magic Johnson, who had a knee problem and uh, got a knee pad for it and came back as good as new, Tommy. Well, I hope it stays that way. Sometimes those things uh, fill up over the weekend. Steve Harris, the rookie from Tulsa in the game for long-range shooting. Level throws up an air ball on a three-point attempt, and it's still Houston ball. It's magic, amazing that we give the MVP to Magic Johnson over a guy like Kareem, who scored 31 points and continued his assault against the Twin Towers today. But I think he's the guy that unquestionably got that fast break for the Lakers. And that, as you pointed out, had to be the key. They got their break going, and the Rockets did not today. You're absolutely right. And uh, Magic Johnson, when they got to the set offense, even did a great job of making sure it got to the right people. And Magic got it to the right person himself. <laughs> and the lead is 12 with 28 seconds to go. Biggest margin of victory between these two teams. The Lakers won one game by 22. Otherwise, every game was under 10. Level is fouled by Cooper from behind with 16 seconds to go. So a uh, confident and perhaps relaxed Laker bench. Kareem played 35 minutes, and that's fewer than he had played in the recent games against Dallas in the semifinal. And they were leaning and heavy on him in the Mavs series. James Donaldson put a lot of beef on him, and I thought he handled his speed test admirably. 
One of the few bright spots for Bill Fitch today, outside of Elijah Wan with 28 and Samson with 99, who really didn't get their game going. 19 for Samson was Mitchell Wiggins, who scored 24 points as Magic, you saw, went out of the game, and we've already honored him. <laughs> 16 seconds remaining. Game two, you know, is a game of adjustments. And uh, the, the winner normally doesn't think he has to make too many adjustments. Probably not. And uh, maybe he doesn't. But a few things the Rockets could do could put the heat back on the Lakers again. Final seconds. Goodmanson. The Houston Rockets will have day to talk things over and try to make those adjustments. The game is over. The L.A. Lakers have taken a 1-0